Hey guys, I got a really cool scope video for you today. Uh, first, let me give you some background. Of course, we are talking about vector optics here. Now, I've been using uh, the vectroscopes for a while now. If you remember the 244 yard shot I took at the golf ball, actually it was a ping pong ball, but it doesn't matter. I uh, was actually using one of the vector Tauros scopes and today I got vector optics Veyron series for you. I have to thank Francisco for lending me those and I've actually already purchased those so these are already mine because I really like them. I bought the whole series of them. So um, let me get right to it. I have full of guns as you can see around me here uh, and uh, this is simply because I want to point out the main feature of this series of scopes which is their size. So that is the first thing we're going to take a look at and then we will go through the specs. So as you can see the smallest one is 3 to 12 by 44. They're all 44 by the way. Uh, and the second one is 4 to 16 by 44 and 6 to 20, uh, 26 by 44, the biggest one. So just for com comparing them with Victor Tauros, the Tauros uh, is uh, actually I al al also have all three in that series from uh, Tauros uh, and this is the smallest and this one is actually 3 to 18 by uh, what is it by 50 okay so uh, you already see the size L let's say these two scopes are comparable in terms of magnific magnification you can, you can already see the size difference so this is huge compared to that one and the main reason why they achieved what they achieved so the uh, uh, size and the uh, low weight is probably because of the rear part because the rear part is actually much shorter than most scopes so i have some comparison here this is the smallest one this is for example the taurus the medium one this is the uh, 4 to 24 by 50 so you can see again the size difference and behind me i guess i didn't, don't even have to show you this but you can see what is the difference between the 5 to 30 by 56 against to for example this one is 6 to 24 so huge 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 difference size of course with uh, r5 super long this looks quite normal it doesn't really look too big so uh, it's perfectly okay but for a smaller gun like for example huben or priest or any other for example lashy two or something like that these scopes are really uh, appropriate in terms of size. Here is another maybe familiar scope. This is a high range, uh, high price range scope. This is Vortex 5 to 60 by 52. Again, very small scope for, for each, its uh, performance, so for its uh, magnification, but still much, much, of course, bigger than the Veyron series. So, okay, now that we've got this, uh, let's put them off and compare them side by side and go through its features. Now I will uh, bring you the full specifications on the screen. I will not go through everything. Uh, so for, for comparing the size, the smallest one, just let me put this away. This one is actually less than 10 inch. So it's about, uh, I think, 246 millimeters or something like that. So really short. Okay, so let's get through the features. There are all, they are all first focal plane. I really like first focal plane scopes simply because 
the reticle is always connected to the turrets so you always know uh, how many uh, mill dots you the mill dots are basically always mill dots so if you don't know what uh, first focal plane scopes are i suggest that you check it out but it's really the the thing that makes them different is of course the fact that the reticle is always the same compared to the target and you can see this by when you are zooming in or out the reticle actually gets bigger or smaller so it's always the same as the background uh, and if you change the magnification of course they change as well now this is their big advantage over the regular uh, second focal plane which are maybe more common scopes um, and also disadvantage the advantage is of course that you always have the correct uh, scale or your, your mill dots are always mill dots it's never off no matter what magnification you're using that is the big advantage the, and the disadvantage I would say is usually the fact that uh, um, the reticle actually gets bigger with zooming in meaning that the, also the thickness of the reticle is relatively big and um, actually this is something that I like about Veyron even more than with Tauros because because Tauros has a really high magnification range so for example from 5 to 30 from 4 to 24 and um, of course if you put the reticle thin uh, at the full magnification then you get this advantage of having really really thin reticle at low magnification basically you don't even see it anymore and since since those have a slightly smaller uh, zoom ratio range uh, the reticle is actually always pretty much appropriate it is of course very thin when you zoom fully out but when you zoom fully in you can still have a really fine reticle fine enough to make that really uh, accurate long range uh, shots now uh, there is another thing that um, first focal plane uh, uh, technology brings to the table and that is the fact that you can actually have turrets connected to uh, a reticle so basically that means that uh, you have mill dots on the reticle and you have mill dot clicks so the, the, these are one tenth of the mill dot of the mill um, that means that uh, if you are for example a, uh, for example shooting too low for one mill you know that you have to click exactly 10 clicks up in order to get to your correct position so it's really uh, easy to zero because of that of course so this is r some of the best features that uh, the first focal uh, plane uh, brings to you so um, let's get to some other features uh, you have turrets that are lockable so basically you push down to lock them or push up to unlock them rotate them they are really fine really nice smooth i mean the stops are really really crisp for this price range you it's kind of the best what you can get probably um, you have side parallax which is very important and really practical uh, it goes way down so it goes down below 10 yards uh, which means that even for air guns for the closest range you will not have problem focusing uh, everything works really smooth so nothing is too tight nothing is too loose um, uh, you have uh, you can uh, zero your turrets uh, basically by the tool that is supplied I will show you that uh, later on when I go through the box you get this really really nice for the price range uh, mounts they are picatinny or they are medium height and they have I would say slightly above low co a low price range uh, flip-up covers they work really nice they're really uh, you just have to use the correct force so it's nothing too loose nothing too tight uh, so this is really nice to have these dust covers as well of course you can remove them and once you remove them you will also have your uh, basically your uh, correction for your uh, eyes that you can adjust so you can just rotate this is slightly stiffer which is a nice thing for me because this is usually the settings you may to make once and then leave it as it is um, magnification ring is smooth and in the front side 
you have uh, honeycomb, I think it's called. Uh, this is basically to remove glare if the sun is uh, shining from the front and hitting the front lens. Lens, you can get like foggy image, and this is to remove it. This is basically instead of the long tube that you usually have on a lot of scopes. And this, of course, makes it a lot shorter, but still very functional. And you, you really don't see this cone through the scope, so it's really no, nothing, you don't lose any image quality because of this. But just in case, if you want, you can still remove it, use without it. Or you can even unthread this part, which is a little harder to do. I think there's some thread lock on this uh, screw, uh, on this uh, thread and you can remove it out and then screw it back in if you like if you don't want to ever use this honeycomb uh, so let's get to the box in the box of course the scope will come really really well protected this is something nice to see because a lot of times when you are buying relatively low price uh, chinese scopes you will uh, get uh, get damage almost always but in this case it's packed in the back and in this soft foam so it doesn't get damaged you get some tools basically an allen key and really important for uh, zeroing the scope so for setting the zero you get a tool that will not damage uh, your uh, scope when you unthread the top and then because you can do this also with a coin or a screwdriver but you will damage the aluminium part so you use this tool and then unscrew take it up and put it to zero and then you have it uh, set uh, you set the new zero as you desire uh, there is some manual i guess i didn't even check that and warranty and things like that and uh, cleaning cloth and in this is uh, where the mounts were of course there is also an allen key for those in there so um, these are the specs now uh, again i will put the full specs on the video uh, so you can read it i will not go through everything because that will make the video too long um, a couple of things i would like to say um, these are of course still considered a budget price scopes and uh, for my in my opinion they're really good value for the money uh, i can recommend getting them uh, from francisco i will put a uh, link or uh, links for the web shop below uh, you can check it out there but the prices are somewhere around 200 just over 200 euros or 200 dollars depends on where you get them but uh, typically like 220 230 and 240 or something like that. really really close uh, in price so uh, it, basically the price will not uh, uh, not determine which one you get because it's such a small difference that any one you prefer you will probably get that one because it's such a small difference um, what I would like to mention in regards to budget scope in general I've been through a lot of budget scopes and actually for the first focal plane which was kind of always my desire to have I really gone through a lot a lot of different uh, models and brands and I found a common problem with all of them until I come to the vector optics in general so the Taurus is also first focal plane uh, the problem is usually that uh, you cannot get really uh, the, the uh, crosshair in focus for some reason I, I was told that that's maybe just my eyes or something like that but for some reason with most budget scopes in first focal plane I never got the reticle to be crisp it's always was a little blurry I, I never could really focus at the same time the reticle uh, and the background as well and I played with everything with side focus with uh, uh, this adjustment and everything and I just never could get it in focus uh, and I must say that vector optics does this perfectly there is absolutely absolutely no issue for me to have perfect focus uh, in endoscopes and I'll also be showing you uh, by the side videos from each scope so you will see the image quality um, and second actually it's since we are image quality is actually image quality uh, also a lot of scopes 
I noticed that once you get to that higher range of its magnification capability, you usually get softer image. Usually the contra uh, the sorry the sharpness is still there, but the, the contrast gets way lower uh, as as you were looking through a fog. Now I'm really happy to say that all all the uh, vector optics uh, scopes I've tested don't don't have nearly as much problem as most of them do. Uh, if I would say from these three, of course the highest magnification, the 24, is the probably the, the one that you notice this the most. Um, and uh, that's a really uh, important feature to have. You need to have clear image. And um, there, there are already some videos on these scopes. I will not even go through tracking and uh, through uh, accuracy of the reticle. It's as good as any scope can be. I really like the tracking and I really like the accuracy of the mill dots. They are precise. Also the focusing wheel, uh, you can actually rely on this to get the focus when you get to 25 yards, it's actually in focus for 25 yards. So this is really, really nice in this kind of scopes. Of course, the image quality is still slightly lower than some higher end scopes, but in the price range, I haven't yet found a scope that would be similar price and similar image quality. And that is something that is very important. One thing to keep in mind is these scopes are smaller. Uh, they still have 30 millimeter tube, which is important. So, but still the objective is 44 millimeters. So don't expect a scope like this to be really good in scenarios where your target is in a really dark place and you're sitting somewhere on the sun. Of course, the smaller the objective of the, uh, for, um, the scope, the less light it will uh, gather, the darker the image would be. So this goes for all scopes and this is actually uh, relevant in terms of the magnification. The higher magnification, the bigger objective you need in order to get the same amount of light. And these all have the same objective, meaning that this at 24 will be darker than, for example, this one at 12 magnification. So this is just something you have to be aware of. Okay, so now I will try to show you the image quality that you can ex expect from these scopes. We're going to go through, through all the scopes, uh, starting with the smallest one. So this is uh, 3 to 12 by 44. And you're seeing me zooming in from minimum to maximum. And uh, the targets over here, the tree actually is at about 70 meters or 76 yards. Uh, now, uh, I generally don't like using scope cameras. That's why for this setup to actually show you the actual image quality, I was actually using a, a higher grade camcorder. This is actually Sony AX700 because uh, with other scope cameras, devices like phone scope and things like that, I really wasn't really satisfied with the image I was getting uh, to present it for you in terms of image quality. Uh, so from uh, this test on, we will then move forward to a longer range. So the next range will be again all three scopes at 910 meters. So this is starting right now. And so this is about 1000 yards, starting with 3 to 12 and going up from there. Um, I would like to point out one more thing I didn't mention before. Um, all of these scopes are without any illumination. They don't have any reticle illumination. Now I know that for some this is a deal breaker. I know that some of you really really like uh, to have that feature. Personally I don't need it. I basically never ever use them. I uh, never ever use it, so for me it's actually just as well or even better not uh, to have a function that I never use. But for those of you that do uh, need or want this function, you might want to look at, uh, for example, Taurus, uh, Taurus range of scopes from Vector Optics, as those do have this illumination. Over here you see that I didn't perfectly focus uh, the image at the full end. This is not the scope's fault. That was actually my fault. Uh, right now, what you are seeing is actually a recording made by a phone, 
and uh, there is also additional glass additional lenses in between the scope and the phone so that's why the image is uh, worse but what i want to show you here is actually uh, how the mill dots actually fit the actual sizes so we are at 102 meters so basically 100 and what you can see is that the 10 centimeter circle which is the second one from the bigger to smaller is actually exactly one mil dot as it should be right now i'm uh, uh, trying to show you uh, focusing features so basically side focus or parallax adjustment as you want to call it uh, right now we focus on something really near those bushes were like i don't know 10 12 yards or meters away and uh, this uh, grass and then targets is again 100 meters so this is the full range of uh, focus so um guys thanks for watching i hope i've been through enough uh leave a comment below and i will answer of course subscribe and hit that bell button and uh, see you in the next video thanks guys bye